My sort of wanting to be an actor started in my early sort of teens, and by the time I finished school, I was sort of right. I definitely want to be an actor. Nowhere near getting into the industry at that point. Did two years of college, and then by that stage, my ideas had been firmed. I'd want to be. I wanted to be an actor, and that was it. And I think my first break was actually, you know, the stage newspaper. Believe it or not, it was a, a little ad, ad in the back for a play, um, and it was playing at the Red Lion Pub Theatre. Um, and you know, I went there, did the audition, got it, got the job, and from that point on, you know, I sort of understood what the industry was about, you know, because I hadn't thought about bringing agents to see the show, but it just so happens an agent saw the show. Um, it got transferred to the Lillian Bayliss and then an agent came again and you know that was the beginning of my sort of journey. My first agency actually was a co-op. Um, this guy that came from the co-op wanted me to be a part of it so and that was my, my entry point. Welcome to the BAFTAs. Um, how are you feeling tonight? Obviously nominated for an incredible role in Beast of No Nation. Thank you. Uh, I feel good. I yeah. feel really good. It's a lovely night. It's Valentine's night. There's love in the air. Um, and it's my first BAFTAs, so I'm super excited. It's your first and you've got a nomination. Tell me about Commandment playing him. I mean, he's, he's obviously a character who has probably been through an awful lot. I mean, to make him how he is, we can't excuse his behavior, but he's a tough character to play. Yeah, it's one of the hardest, you know. There's, He's a bad guy, but you need to, I needed to bring some sort of humanity to him. And that was a craft. Uh, my director and the team helped me do that. And, uh, but it is one of my proudest roles, for sure. And an incredible young cast yeah. of, of non-actors around you, uh, particularly Abraham, who plays Agu, yeah. who is, you know, he, I mean, his performance is amazing. Yeah, it's stunning. I mean, it's very pure. It was heartbreakingly pure. Um, when I was working with him, I was sort of very nervous about what, how he was psychologically being affected, but he was like a brilliant actor. Took it on the chin and just went for it. And obviously there are brutal scenes in this film, but it's about child soldiers in Africa. And I, I, I think the director, uh, Kerry Fukunaga, actually said probably what goes on is a lot worse than almost what we're seeing. Um, but an important story to tell. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's one of those horrible moments in our, in our, in our world where it was on the TV a lot. And then this film has brought it all back. It's an incredibly hard film to fund, to get people excited for it. But thankfully we got there, we got it to a lot of people and they've seen it. And uh, the story feels like it's still relevant, you know? Yeah. Let's talk about Star Trek. I'm sure you can't tell us anything, but you must be quite excited. Star Trek? Who's in Star Trek? <laughs> no, yeah, I've done it. I, I can't wait for people to see it. I know, we really want to see it. It's important to have an open mind. I know it sounds like a very obvious thing, but you know, obviously you are the vessel and then on top of you and added into you are this, these personalities that you have to portray. So having an open mind, you know, a blank sheet of paper is the first thing that I always encourage, you know what I mean, as you know, with younger, younger actors or whatnot, is to just, you know, throw away any ideas you've got and just let us just start building, you know, this, this character from the beginning. Uh, it's important to have a good eye for detail as an actor, um, just in terms of, you know, how people react emotionally, you know, psychologically. If you can understand that in detail, it's a very um, good mechanism to use as, as an actor. Um, uh, it's important not to go to bed too late because 6 a.m. calls are no fun. Well, Idris, not only are you nominated for Best Leading Actor, you're also my mum's favourite actor. I love that. <laughs> I, I love that. Unfortunately, yeah. I've lost my voice over the last two days, so I'm a little bit nervous that if I did win, I won't have much to say, so oh well. You can pull, pull it, it off, back. Oh well, oh well. Yeah. What a beautiful suit. Thank you always look pretty sharp, but this is like grow grain ribbon. Oh lapels. yeah, well noticed. It's Tom Ford, yeah, so thank you very much. I like it. Absolutely beautiful. So in terms beautiful. of your acting, you've got your DJing as well. Yeah. You've even got, I've heard, a, a cheeky fight coming up. You know, what, what's the biggest priority? Uh, well, to be honest, all of it is just living, isn't it? Living life. You're a renaissance a man. Yeah, why not? Do whatever you want. We've only got like 80 years more give or take so we might as well just live it Absolutely. and can you become the next james bond all right you know what it's the biggest rumor in the world who knows but what i mean i would watch it would you watch I, that i would I absolutely it. watch that similar to you know what it takes to be a good actor is keep an open mind you know don't you know some actors young actors have this sort of idea that they want to be movie stars and you know want to be on tv and all that stuff and that's great but you know, I started off in theatre and ended up in television. And you know, I, I of course I wanted to be in film, but the, 
the theatre route just opened doors for me. Um, you know, as an actor, you know, you can act, be an actor and do voiceovers. You can read scripts, you can read plays as an actor to get yourself, but just get as, as involved as you can um, without being too choosy about the type of work you do. You know, it's really great to be able to just get your performance and your creativity out. So just be really open-minded as an as as early actor. Be prepared. Um, you know, that's very important. And, um, you know, follow your leads. If, you know, someone says, call me, do it. Call them, send them a resume and a headshot. The recipient of this year's BAFTA Special Award is just that, special. Not only is he one of the most talented and world-renowned actors in the country. He's also an internationally celebrated producer, writer, and staunch champion of new talent, opportunity, and diversity within our industry. And incidentally, I understand he is one hell of a DJ. And I know for a fact that the last time I was with him, he was still an undefeated kickboxer. But that will be for another show. Idris Elba first made his name in The Wire, where he was so good at playing American gangster Stringer Bell that even now some people refuse to believe he's British. This success led to him playing his now legendary role of DCI Luther in the award-winning BBC drama Luther. Working with Idris has been one of the highlights of my career. We've worked together for about 10 years as Alice and Luther, and we have had some amazing times, uh, both on set and behind the scenes whether it was sort of pub crawls in Islington with Warren Brown, which did result in the recording of a single which has never seen the light of day, and I don't know why Idris, because the world needs it. As Idris's career and success grew, so did his philanthropic spirit, which began to have a hugely positive effect on the UK TV landscape, when in 2013 he founded Green Door Productions. It can be really hard to find a way into the TV industry it just champions diversity. He took a risk on me and gave me the opportunity, and that opportunity changed my life. This year's BAFTA Special Award goes to the one and only Idris Elba. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to BAFTA for giving me this opportunity and finally recognizing, I'm joking, I'm very proud. Uh, I just want to start by thanking my mum and dad, Winston and Eve, for giving me life. And without that, I wouldn't be here. And also my children, uh, Riaz, Issy, and Winston, to my beautiful wife, Sabrina. Thank you, guys. I couldn't live without you. Um, listen, I, when I first got this award, I was like, wow, it's a bit early for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, I was wrong. It's a special award, and it is special, and I appreciate it. I know that I don't believe that I'm very special. I believe that what I've been given is an opportunity and what I've done is taken my opportunity and handed it backwards and handed it to other people that need that opportunity. That is something that, you know what, I didn't plan to do. It's just a natural um, feeling. It's a natural uh, reaction. Uh, I feel very grounded coming from East London where I was born and raised. And I know that, you know, in East London, we treat people, we try to treat people with respect because everyone comes from the same cloth. And in the world of film and television, nothing is different in that sense. In, this, in other words, no one's different. So me giving opportunity to someone else is just part of my inheritance, part of my, my upbringing. Um, I'm hoping that from this point on in this world, in this junction, that everyone sees that you can't make it without anyone else, that we all think about paying it backwards to the person behind you so they get an opportunity. That's definitely why I think I've got this award. Um, one day I might get an acting award, but until that day, I'm going to make more opportunity for more actors, more writers, and more people to come and speak and tell their story. Mm -hmm.